Hi, I'm Dana Heinklein here with Charlotte Copley for Free Fire. What are some of the perks of shooting a film that's basically just in one location? Well, probably from an acting point of view, uh, we got to shoot in sequence mostly, which is great. You know, that's always a, 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 a tricky part of doing performances. Um, so I'd say that, and in this case, because we all got on, it, it could have gone horribly wrong, it could have not been a perk, but we had to spend a lot of time together. Because we were shooting in sequence and because we were all in this one contained location, sometimes they never knew who was going to be on camera. So we all would arrive at the same time in the morning and we'd sort of hang around and play, you know, darts or table tennis or whatever while, you know, these two or three or four actors were on. And then all of a sudden they'd call you and say, oh, Shalta, we see your legs in the background. You've just got to come and lie because we didn't have stand-ins. And I think, so that, that's, that was definitely a, a, a perk and that it created a nice camaraderie between us. Uh, and uh, thankfully, as I say, we, we all got on. If we hadn't, that could have been you know, a downside. In a moment where you are in the background like that, are you like in character or are you just like on your phone because you know your legs are going to be the only? No, you, you have to always be on. You can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't cheat with that sort of stuff. That would be very disrespectful to your fellow actors. It's, you know, it's about time management. Yeah. If, if, yeah. You know, you can utilize the time. Um, what's the most injured you've ever been on set uh, and chosen to keep going? Because you guys, like the characters in this, blind adrenaline, I assume. That's a good question. The most injured that I've ever been and carried on going. Um, I suppose. I suppose actually the, the hardest for me was that I was sick when I was shooting in Moscow on Hardcore Henry. I was very ill at one point. So it actually wasn't, I've never had an injury that was so sort of incapacitating that it made it impossible to sort of work. That, nothing that leaps to mind, but being really, really sick and, uh, and trying to you know, carry on going. And I was doing, it was one of the, da the little dance sequence in Hardcore Henry where they were changing my makeup all the time and I was falling to the concrete. And just like mentally and physically, just being really, really sort of broken. You know, I think that, that's the hardest, like real illness and to carry on is, is tough. What do you like tell yourself on those days to get through it? I just, yeah, I just, I just have, you know, and sometimes tiredness also does it. I remember on District 9 just being utterly exhausted. Like when we did two weeks of pickups, I was doing like six hour turnarounds. So I'd sleep for like four hours. And um, on those cases, I remember literally just going, please let me just get through this day. Like, let me just finish this day. I would just sit there repeating that to myself. Yeah. What's the most unique place you've heard your accent attributed to? So actually in Free Fire when they said Scandinavia, <laughs> probably that. Um, and, and funny, that's an improv line that came from them actually just listening to the voice I was doing because nobody knew on Free Fire. I think the other actors, they knew I was playing him as South African, but until the the camera rolled, which was, and because we, we shot in order, the first time I was on camera was when in the movie when I'm presenting the guns and meeting everyone. And uh, I think they thought I was going to talk like this, you know, that's what they assumed. So when I started going like, how's it guys? <laughs> I could see in real life, all the actors were like, fuck, is this what he's going to do <laughs> like the whole time? And then that line came out with Sam and then I'm like, what the fuck is that accent? Yeah, a chance. What the fuck is that accent? Oh, I think it's like Swiss or something. Austrian. Have you ever referred to yourself in the third person, or do you ever do that? Because your character certainly seems to sound I, I, I don't. I really, I really don't like the third person, but my dad has done that occasionally, and I really, I really dislike it, and I always tease him about it. I'm like, Dad, you can't, you can't do that. It's like Donald Trump and my father are the only two people I know that speak of themselves ever in the third person. Um, <laughs> But he, he, my dad is not, he doesn't do it as much as, as Trump does, but um, uh, I, I, I hope not. I hope there isn't a quote somewhere. I, I'd be surprised and disturbed if you found a quote somewhere where I had referred to myself in the third person. I, I don't think so. But, but yeah, 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 yeah. Vernon, Vernon enjoys that. Who on the cast would you want on your side in a gunfight? I'd have to say, um, I'd have to say Army Hammer. Yeah, sorry guys, the rest <laughs> of you, but yeah. Because? 
he's just really good with the gun and he's from Texas and uh, you know the cliches are kind of true in that respect <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he, I'd, I'd want him do you yeah. think they'd say you though because you're from South Africa and like, I don't know I don't know <laughs> that seems like a very solid you'd have to it. ask them you'd have to ask them I, I hope so okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> so how did like the physical challenges of this film compare to some of your other roles because you have you do very physical roles a lot of the time and yeah I mean this was this was actually uh, you know obviously not as physical but the real challenge on this was the doing a burn you know getting set on yeah. fire uh, which I hadn't <laughs> done yeah I hadn't done that before and so that was a little scary and they actually they um, scheduled that because like I was saying everything is shot in sequence except the burn which for insurance purposes was shot afterwards <laughs> right at the end so I'm like so this is a serious thing, a burn. Suddenly I started to realize how serious it was when it was like I was shooting after everyone else had left. I'm like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be doing the burn. But it was, it was fun. It was, and so that was, that was definitely the most physically challenging part of this one. Do you regret it? Do you regret it? No, no, it? no, okay. no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Did yeah, you like ask to take some of the graphs home just to scare people sometimes, like Halloween costumes? Style? No, that stuff, you know, the interesting thing about that was that looking at... And, and psychologically, I made this harder and harder for myself because they did a few days. So we shot kind of out of sequence. So I had to, I had to um, be burnt before I actually did the burn. So I had done some scenes with my hands burnt to like third, third degree burns and arms. And the makeup was so incredibly realistic. There was one of the times in acting, sometimes, you know, you have these things where Obviously, you know you're acting. People are like, I'm so in the role or whatever. And it can happen that you sort of really feel like you're becoming someone else. But the physiology of it, like actually looking at your body and thinking that it's burnt and your brain is seeing a signal of like, I should be, this is burnt. Like this is really happening to me. I had that a few times and this was very disturbing. Like your body is trying to figure out what's happening, especially if you actually feel that now there's fire on you. Then you look at a burnt hand that's so convincingly done. Um, and as we were putting those prosthetics on, we had a, a medic who would come in and he'd worked on major burn victims. So he was, the, the onset medic was checking how the makeup was and I'd be asking him questions, you know. And then I would try and have some comfort. So I'm like, so if I had, you know, gas on my hand and it's, and it's set alight, I mean, it wouldn't burn this badly in real life that quickly. And he's like, no, no, it would. Yeah, no, you'd have about 10 seconds and it would look like that, you know. And I was like, oh, okay, great. So if it is, as an accident, that is the level of burn you'd get. It was, it made it very real, you know, sitting there for hours and he would talk about the wounds and um, it's nasty, man. Burns are really, really unpleasant way to go. Would you rather have the stash for the rest of your life or something like Vickis' arm? I'd take the stash. Stash? Yeah, yeah. Did you yeah, enjoy the having the stash? Did you like I d I, d I do actually, because, and you know why? Because my wife likes it. If my wife hated it, you know, like all men, it's like, you know, you sort of do what your woman likes uh, and then claim that you don't. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, so she, she loves, she always tries to get me to grow the moustache, actually. So Interesting. There you go. So you're yeah. like, yes, baby, yeah. this is yeah, yeah, yeah. for you. Yeah, there you go. The yeah. Reason. Even the beards she likes. So, yeah. Um, what inspires you? Um, what inspires me, just in life or in the yeah, business? Like, in the theater one. I mean, life. I think, I think um, uh, uh, you know, I find, I, I, I get very inspired by music. Interesting. Yeah, I, I like different, like, right now. well, I listen to uh, a lot of film scores, you know, so I, I spend a lot of time, like when I'm writing, like I've been writing my film that I'm gonna shoot, and so I'll spend a lot of time listening to music. So there's a, a bunch of composers, like Hans Zimmer is like one of my favorites, you know, um, of course. Uh, so I, yeah, I'll tend to, and there's, a, there's an obscure thing that I found on Spotify called Acoustic Labs, you know, some random, there you go. You know, uh, they, do, they do some like typical scores, you know, they do their own versions of scores that you've heard and then just their own tracks as well, which are amazing. Yeah. If you could only pick one composer to write the soundtrack of your life, who would it be? The soundtrack of my life? The whole life. <sighs> I'm going to go with Hans Zimmer. Yeah, yeah, just because he's my he's my boy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Pick like Randy Newman. No, 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 because no, Hans, Hans can go to all the places. Hans can actually yeah. do all the different you yeah. know styles from like the African Lion King to like. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He 
you're, you're yeah. very broad spectrum. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Different characters that I play, craziness. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty top choice. Yeah. Um, what frustrates you in life, in careers, either way? Uh, I suppose hypocrisy. You know, and yeah. like the level of hypocrisy in human beings. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Yeah. Fair. yeah. Living or dead, who's someone you'd like to collaborate with that you haven't already? It's funny because the people that I would like to collaborate with would never coll collaborate because they're sort of like, it's someone like Trey Parker, you know, who's, who writes the South Park and Book of Mormon and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 but he has his unit. You, you can't say, no, you can't, you can't. You just, that sort of stuff is, you know, people do their own thing and I think that's what makes a lot of the great people really great is they do have their collaborators potentially, but they, they their own you know, unique little group but that makes amazing like, work. You're my, you're my person now. Yes. Trey Parker, maybe? Yeah, yeah, probably. Really? Probably, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. a good one. It's a yeah. Good one. Like, no, he's kind of unbelievable, that unexpected. guy. Unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, who was your favorite childhood fictional hero or heroine? I had, I had a few different ones. Um, when you say fictional, I'm trying to think back who I would... Superheroes or... Scientists. <laughs> I was more into like, uh, I was more into sort of crazy. I mean, like one of the first ones was ironically and amazingly was Dwight Schultz on the A Team. You know, it was like just yeah, just <laughs> like these characters. Little, I responded. Yeah, I, I I I responded to kind of fun, kind of crazy characters. The kind of stuff Eddie Murphy was doing. And then later on, like Jim Carrey was doing, uh, Robin Williams. You know, those, those characters more so than, I would say, you know, any of the superheroes. Um, yeah. There's no wrong answer. It's yeah. your childhood. Yeah. Um, what's the best piece of advice you've been given and the worst piece of advice you've been given? Because people get some pretty terrible advice in this. I mean, I, I think the the uh, the best advice I've I wouldn't say it's stuff that somebody's given me personally it just stuff that I've read or stuff that I've come across you know um, there's a few different things that have that have stuck with me over time and uh, one of them, one thing that always stuck with me is just something that Eckhart uh, Tolle, Tolle, Tolle spoke of, um, which is this thing of if you're not living in a state of acceptance, enjoyment, or enthusiasm, you're making life miserable for yourself and other people in some way. And that's something that's always stuck with me, you know, through work and stuff that I'm doing. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers.